we are going to do an application under the Wake Energy Theorem. But let's remind ourselves, the Wake Energy Theorem says the net weight done on an object is equal to each change in kinetic energy. The net weight done on an object is equal to each change in kinetic energy. Uh, we have to pay attention. It does not say the weight done on an object. It says the net weight done, meaning we need to add uh, a number of works before we get to the network. Now, let's write it down. It says the network done on an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Good. Now, we, 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 have, we have a problem on the board. The problem here, we have Kali. We have the ramp verb, the ramp A, B, C. Now, we have Kali standing at the top of the ramp um, at point A. At point A, now the height of the ramp is 1.5 meters. Now, Kylie slides down the ramp. Kylie slides down the ramp. Now, and she accelerates from rest, accelerates from rest down the slide. She experiences a constant frictional force of 1,9 newtons. We need to find the speed of Kylie at point C. Let's analyze the situation. We have Kani standing there at point A. Now Kani slides down the, the ramp uh, and then she experiences a constant frictional force of 1,9 newtons. Now our task here today is to find the speed of Kani at point C. But uh, you know it's easy to use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. We are not going to use that principle. The question dictates here that we need to use the word energy theory and we are going to apply as such. Now, before you can apply the work energy theory, you need to go back to grade 10, know how to draw free body diagrams. Then from free body diagrams, we are going to analyze the number of works which are acting on Kani or which are acting on the object. So if you cannot evaluate or if you cannot analyze the free body diagrams. You need to make sure, go back right now and then do that because we're going to apply that exactly. Another thing, the geometry is going to play a major role here. You need to understand mathematics because mathematics is going to help you here. As I always say, mathematics is the queen of all sciences. Now, let's, let's analyze the situation. Let's draw the free body diagram for Kai. Now, we have Kai there. I'll temporarily put a ramp like that because I don't want to make a mistake. Now, we have Kai there. Now, there are always two forces which are acting on an object. If the object is on top of a plane, there are always two forces that are acting. The normal force which is always perpendicular to the plane. Secondly, the gravitational force which is always acting downwards. I repeat, you have the normal force which is acting perpendicular to the plane, perpendicular to the plane, meaning it forms an angle of 90 degrees with the plane. Second, you have what you call the, the downward force of gravity. It's always acting downward. Let me apply that. The perpendicular force, which is called the normal force, you know, it should be straight to there. The normal force, which is normally denoted by N, it is perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the ramp in this case. Then you always have what you call the downward force of gravity. Gravity always acts downward. Now I'll indicate it by Fg then. Remember it's free body diagram and we use it to analyze the forces. So here we had the 30 degrees. Good. Now you see we have there. We are told Kani goes this way. Kani goes this way. We are told that she experiences a constant frictional force of 1,9 newton, meaning there's friction there. Now I'm going to place friction like that. So I have Fr. Then I have a dot there. So we have something like that. Remember, free body diagram, we have to indicate the forces which are acting on an object only, the forces only. So you realize that I have to do this. It's a little bit of more details. I'm going to write it thereafter. 
Now, we have the vertical component of gravity which balances with the normal force. It balances with the normal force. It balances with the normal force. There it is. So it's Fg parallel. Now we have the horizontal component. The, the horizontal component of gravity which causes the motion of Kanye. It causes Kanye to go down. So I have that. Uh, I have that as well. So it's Fg. I'll call Fgh. Can I call this one F Fgh? No, Fg vertical. So it's Fg vertical. This is Fgh. Right? Let's analyze. The force of gravity which causes Kanye to move is this. This one balances with the normal force. So, because we've got zero displacement in this direction, this force of gravity, which is vertical, balances with the normal force, so it does not work. Now, the force that does work is this one. Why are we saying it does work? It causes Kanye to move along that plane. So, we have H there, FGH there. Now, this angle, if you do the geometry, always replace it here. So, we have 30 here. If you do the geometry mathematics, you will realize this angle is actually there. So we have that there. Can I, can I then wrap this? Yes. Because I do it just to understand what is happening. So that's my free body diagram. So I've got how many two forces? How, how many forces which are doing work? I've got only two forces. I've got the frictional force. I've got the horizontal component of gravity. Normally it's called the Fg parallel. It's parallel to the plane. Fg parallel. It's parallel to the plane. We see the plane here. We see the plane, the incline there. So it's Fg parallel. It causes motion parallel to the plane. So it's this force of gravity that is causing the motion and this frictional force. Good. Now we are going to use this formula. Work net is equal to changing. Good. Now, let's analyze. If we want to find the work done by, if we want to find the work done by friction, the work done by friction, we are going to say frictional force frictional force multiplied by delta x. In this case, displacement, which is 3 meters. Right? But this frictional force is negative. This frictional force is negative. So I'm going to say cos of 1 dt. Good. So I've got frictional force. I've got the work done by friction. So you can say this is work friction. Now I'm going to find the work which is done by the, the horizontal component of friction. Which trig ratio are we going to use here? We're going to use sine because sine we've got an angle here and then this angle is opposite to this side. So the trig ratio which incorporates the opposite with the hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to have Fg sine of 30 delta x. Now that is going to give me work done by gravity. But which gravity? The horizontal component of gravity. Good? Now, you realize here, you realize here that I can say, I can, this is cos 180 is minus 1. Friction opposes the motion. So by just introducing cos 180, cos 180 is minus 1. I'm saying friction acts opposite to the force of gravity which causes the motion. So another student, another student can write this as minus fr delta x. It's the same. My minus, I've introduced my minus in a fancy way. 
and my minus is cos of 180. So instead of saying minus 1, I said cos of 180. So we know the network. The network will be this plus that. Now we are going to press our calculators right now. You are going to give me the magnitude of the work done by friction. Let's substitute. Friction we are told is 1,9. Now we are told that that is 3 meters. The ramp is 3 meters. You can see the ramp is 3 meters. Now we have 3. Now we have cos of 180. This is a fancy way of saying minus 1. Fancy way of saying minus 1 is 180. The reason why we don't use a negative. What, the reason why we want a negative force of uh, 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 a frictional force is that friction opposes the motion. So we can say, a student can say 1,9 multiplied by 3, but say negative, or negative 1,9 times 3, we get a negative answer. So 1,9 times 3, That's 5,7. Negative 5, 7. negative 5, 7. 7. Now choose. Good. Now let's find the work that is done by gravity by the horizontal this the horizontal component of gravity. Now it's work done by gravity, but which some people call FG parallel. It's fine, it's the same. So we're going to find the gravity gravitational force. We can find gravitational force because we know the, the mass of kind. Gravitational force is given by MG. So we're going to have mg, this is equivalent to fg, gravitational force. Now, sine, I'm sure you understand why we said sine, because we know this, this is given by fg, and we can find this, fg is mg, and we know 22 times 9,8. So we know this, this is the hypotenuse, and we know this angle here. So the reason why we are using sign is because we are dealing with this side, and this side is opposite to the hypotenuse. That's why we said sign of fate. We are not interested in this side. We are not. Now sign of fate. Good. Delta x is three. Now we've got twenty-two. The mass of kind is twenty-two, right? Now nine comma eight sign of fate times 3. Punch that in. Punch that in the calculator. comma 323,4 joules. Good. Now let's find the work net. I'm going to say therefore work net is equal to work done by friction plus the work done by Fg, which is horizontal. Some people say parallel. It's the same. Now, here we are going to have negative 5,7. Good. Here we are going to have 323,4. Now, what's the answer? 3, 1, 1, 7, 7. choose. Now we have wagnet. Let's apply the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem says the net work done on an object, the net work done, we've just found the work net, is equal to the change in kinetic energy. What was the task? Our task was to find the velocity at the bottom. We were looking at the final velocity. Now, but we know according to work energy theorem, we can safely say work net is equal to this. Now, we can say half m vf squared vi squared. Good. Now, half, what is the mass of kinetic? 22. Vf, we don't know. We're looking for vf squared. Now, this, we know zero. It's a form rest. So we have zero there. Here, we place this 1, 317,7. 317,7. Good. Here we are going to get 11 VF squared. 317,7. Now I divide by 11, I divide by 11. This cancels that. 317,7 divided by 11. 
28,88 VF squared. I wrote it, I wrote it there. So VF is equal to 5,37 meters per second. Makes sense. Any other questions? Any other questions? Now our next task will be to do a, consider, a consolidated exercise. Now we are going to adapt this exercise from previous exam papers. I'm going to state uh, that exam paper and then we are going to deal, it, to deal with it in that way. 